Hi there. Welcome. Welcome. It's Alex Sabatelli Rager here of Sweet Spot Power. And I'm so, so excited to be doing a long awaited part two interview with David Schmidt of LifeWave. Welcome, David. Alex, great to see you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right. So um, like I said, we're going to be doing a part two. So in the very first interview that I did with him, which I will, of course, link below, I have a nice extensive bio, but I'm going to give you a little bit more about him in just a moment. But what I want to first do is just welcome you to Sweet Spot Power and what this is all about. And everything I've always been about is bringing people into their highest potentiality, their highest potential in an alignment, in a vibrant body, in a really clear quantum mind that is truly in alignment, the mind and the heart and being able to really have this vessel to express, right? To, to embody spirit and, and, and express through us with our highest purpose and to really discover what that is. And as we are in this new great awakening time, which we will be talking about here today, um, there just could not be a better time to find technologies and different things that are gonna help us with this alignment, with the body, with the mind, and again, in the spirit of what it is that we are up to at this point in life. So with that all said, I just wanna um, welcome you again. And David, I just wanna let you know about him a bit. He's a scientist and inventor, of course, and the CEO founder of LifeWave, which is a wellness and technology company recognized multiple times by Inc. Magazine's list of the fastest growing companies. He has a long time inventor with over, I think it's 33 years. Is that about right, David? 33, 35 years? Or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Lost count. <laughs> lost count. Yeah. <laughs> right. But he's had this experience in creating innovative products to solve very difficult problems and is still doing this. We're going to be discussing some of this today. So having studied management, information systems, and biology at Pace University, David pursued a variety of entrepreneurial opportunities and has a long history of developing novel technologies and a range of projects, including a bladeless turbine generator, combustion rocket engines, and new methods for producing oxygen and hydrogen, you know, just little things. And he's also invented a patented double helix conductor, which produces fields made up of electromagnetic and non-electromagnetic energy. And I believe we will be talking a bit about some of these types of things and, and what's happening in our own energetic fields in some of the technologies. So David has been twice awarded honorary doctorate by the International Hall of Fame. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Maybe yeah, more. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, got the, I know I got two awards from them. This is a while ago. Is that a while ago? Oh, okay. It was well, a while ago. Nonetheless, uh, <laughs> twice um, by the International Hall of Fame of Inventors for Advanced Technology. LifeWay's technology, which utilizes phototherapy patches to create cellular changes in the body, stems from many years of his research into drug-free methods for improving upon your quality of life that does not involve any type of diet, exercise program, drug, or supplement while enhancing the body's innate healing abilities and ca capacities. So David holds around, I don't know, 130 patents now. Is that mm, right? Just over that. Yeah. Something like yeah, that. Yeah. Something like that with over, over 70, probably more like 90 now in the field of regenerative science and technology. And this is where we're going. So backed by science and clinical research, LifeWave has now been in operation, just hitting 20 years now, providing cons uh, consumers, customers, people like you, effective methods for improving wellness, notably including activating a person's own stem cells and returning them to a more youthful state. And so, yes, that's the X39 patch. And we will dive a little bit into that today, uh, a lot of bit of that today, as well as maybe some hints into where we're headed. So I can go on and on. Again, I've done another interview. Check the description box. Lots more in there about the patches. So I'm not going to double up on that today. We're taking the conversation to the other side of the spectrum. We did all the science and what was coming in that field. Now we're gonna look at the more metaphysical and spiritual aspects and applications and possible implications during this great awakening time that we are in right now. So as I start to open up this conversation, I just wanna start with the theme of as within, so without, right? So this great awakening, what I've come to understand is our entire solar system is going around a central sun right now. And we're moving into a, a position now where we are closer and closer to that central sun. And therefore there's an effect on the amount of light and photonic light that is hitting the planet. And of course us as parts of this planet as beings of the planet, which is really making big impacts on our bodies, on the collective and on our consciousness. And I'd love if you wouldn't mind just opening up and speaking a little bit to that 
um, so that we can start to open and unpack this this arena. Well, um, I think what we see in the world around us is this incredible uh, tension now between good and evil. And, um, you know, why is it at this particular time in history? Um, and so it's really necessary uh, for people to go through a spiritual awakening and see what's happening in uh, the world around us. It's an opportunity to change things for the better um, before, uh, you know, things get potentially worse than they, they are now. So it's really important time for people to stand up and uh, speak the truth of, of what is happening. And, you know, maybe one of the things that we could cover is what is a human being's connection with light? Um, it's actually very interesting. We are, what, what uh, spiritualists have said for thousands of years actually turns out to be true. We're way more spiritual beings than we are physical beings. And that's probably uh, difficult for many people to believe because we're certainly uh, physical beings having a physical experience. So what I mean by that is scientifically, uh, we can see today uh, with instrumentation how the body is using light for communication. Uh, but where exactly does that light come from in the first place? Well, in our uh, DNA, uh, you have a, a helical coil, and that helical coil is held together by hydrogen. There's actually, if you think of it as a ladder that's stripped down the middle, right in the middle, there are two atoms of hydrogen that counter rotate and they hold the DNA together. Well, we've done experiments uh, in our lab and uh, what we find is that hydrogen is the link between our world and the next world. So uh, in the Bible, in the, the very first sentence, in the beginning, uh, God said, let there be light, right? In the beginning, there was nothing. Where did all of our matter come from? Um, hydrogen, it's the first element on the periodic table, but it's actually, um, I think what you might refer to as protomatter, meaning that it's the bridge between this world and the next. Um, and free energy devices are actually a representation of this, meaning that you can uh, use hydrogen to extract energy from the vacuum. And this is, uh, I suppose, one of the big secrets that the elitists don't want the common people to know, because it means that we wouldn't have to put gasoline in our cars and we wouldn't need to buy electricity and we could all be independent. But for us as human beings, it's important because uh, light emerges from the DNA. It emerges from the cell nucleus. You can photograph this. And these uh, particles of light, uh, photons of light, are in fact as coherent as lasers. And they initiate thousands of different chemical reactions in the body. So there's this intimate connection um, between our spiritual body and our physical body. It's just that uh, we don't really see it in action every day, but it, it's happening inside us. And this is important because it's a mechanism by which our bodies can interact with um, th with the, the light that's all around us. Fascinating. Wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, didn't, I love this. So... So this concept of ascension, um, which is in a sense, a part of what's happening now, more light coming onto the planet, the planet itself is, has, is ascending in frequency. And we can see this evident in even the Schumann resonance, which is the frequency that is being emitted from the planet. I don't know our role in that specifically as humans. We're, to me, we're kind of like the receptors on the cell if, if if the if the planet were a cell we're like the receptors is how i kind of see it we're part of the cell and we're part of the spirit and we we're we're made to channel this and anchor this light in that's how like i just woke up one day with that like visual and it felt like oh 
as within, so without, right? The microcosm and the macro. So this ascension mm -hmm. process we're going through from a sense of the light coming in, the photonic light coming in and stimulating the body, this occurs in the body is what I understand. So it's shifting the not only the planet, but also then the whole body into these higher frequencies. So the body needs to hold more light, which in a sense is the embodiment of our of a higher self, if you want to call that. Um, but this can also cause, because of the distortions from our thought, from the toxicity and the things that degrade the body, it would create, I would imagine, that these distortions now are being brought to light, just like the distortions in the world are being brought to light for us to see and transmute also within. Would you speak to that? Is that something that you understand is it could be happening right now? Because we really see some people are going really sideways and other people are really, really waking up at, you know, at the same time. Well, you said something really interesting, actually, uh, that triggered a thought. Uh, that might be one way to help people understand this. And that is um, the type of equipment that we would use to measure light um, emission from the body is called a photomultiplier tube. And so the way that it's done today is that you'll take your hand and you'll put it into essentially a glove. Uh, the, the wrist is sealed so that there's absolutely no light. And then the photomultiplier tube can read the emission of light off of the hand. And that's representative of what's going on in the body. There are these devices where you go in a room that's completely dark, uh, but that's of course much more expensive, but then you can see the light emission around the entire body. And uh, the reason I bring that up is because as people age, their bodies begin to emit more light. Now, this is maybe at first a little counterintuitive, mm -hmm. um, but what's going on is that the cells in the body are collapsing and they're degrading and they are leaking light. And this is now the, the uh, light that's supposed to be in the cell is not there. And uh, the communications pathways in the body are being disrupted. So what you're saying is very interesting because if there's technology like 5G or Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and it is able to affect the integrity of the cell, then our bodies will leak light. We won't contain it the way that we're supposed to. And this is going to have an adverse effect on our health and an adverse effect on uh, the way we age. And it's going to make us more susceptible to disease. So um, this is actually a, uh, a physical process, even though it's something very, very spiritual. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and we can't see it happening. Just like I can see you on my screen, accept that, no problem. But for whatever reason, people have a difficult time even understanding our multidimensionality and even just how our perspective changes our own reality of what of how we you know see the world and experience the world, what we what, what's happening for us similarly inside. So if we're leaking this energy or this light, um, does that have to do with then in order to rectify or try to rectify this, does this have to do with trying to increase the integrity of the cell wall or how, how would you see that being rectified to keep that leaking from happening? Yeah. So it, it's a fantastic question because if we can improve the integrity of the cell, and we can contain the light that is supposed to be there, then we're going to be able to maintain the integrity of cell communications, and we're going to be able to slow down aging, and we're going to be able to protect ourselves from disease. So this has some real world benefits. Mm -hmm. And um, the way uh, that we found uh, to do this, at least in part, uh, was by increasing the energy that's produced in the mitochondria. So if you can get the mitochondria in the cell burning fat instead of carbohydrates, then the cell membrane will expand. You get a bigger charge of electrical energy around the membrane, and that improves the integrity of the membrane and the cell in part reverses in aging. So that was one of the things that we found in the very early days of LifeWave with the energy patches, and it only kind of got better from there. Um, but later on, um, uh, one of the devices that I patented, we found that we could manipulate the light in the cell 
and reverse the age of the cells by several years in only about 10 minutes. Um, the issue with it initially was that it happened so quickly was that it, it placed stress on the cell. Um, so the challenge over a period of about five years was to figure out, okay, how can we uh, take this mechanism and put it into a product that people can use that's very simple, um, that will help them to uh, improve their health and also potentially reverse the aging process. Mm -hmm. And um, interestingly enough, the all the information on how to do this was right in the Bible. Uh, it, it's that... Um, it, it's that it was there all the time, uh, but it's it's that people haven't seen it yet. Wow, that's all right. That's intriguing, very intriguing. Tell me more, <laughs> or shall we? Shall so, we? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you about how I discovered it. Um, so it, it was not initially. Um, it was not initially in the Bible. I take a uh, Bible study, and um, it's you know, rather practical in the sense that uh, reading passages from the Old or New Testament and looking at the best ways that you can lead your life to love others and be of service to one another and, um, you know, have the best life possible in service of God and in service of other people. You know, how can you really do that? So, um, so that's on the personal side. In what was going on in um, my life as an inventor and researcher was studying organisms that don't age. So we would be looking at in our lab um, as one example, ants. And um, there's a species of ant called the Temnothorax ant that if it is infected by a parasite, the lifespan of the ant increases by about five to six times over normal, and the ant does not age in the process. And what's interesting about this is that it all happens with light. The um, When the parasite infects the ant, the parasite wants to survive. So it triggers the ant into overproducing cytochrome C oxidase. So cytochrome C oxidase carries copper and it initiates a cascade of communications um, that upregulates mitochondrial function. And this flips the gene expression in the ant to a more youthful state. So that's part of the story. Um, we were also studying uh, in our lab lobsters. And I wanted to try to understand why do lobsters not age uh, and there have been lobsters that have been found to be 130 years old, and they're completely young, and they're resistant to disease. So what is going on here? So I started to identify um, different wavelengths of light that were being emitted by lobsters. And uh, I saw a pattern begin to form. These uh, wavelengths of light were not random. They were in a code, if you will, a biological code. So I started to construct devices that could reproduce this effect in the hopes that it would um, have a similar effect on human beings, that we could reverse aging or stop aging. And uh, so I constructed this device. It's now patented. And uh, this was kind of the, <laughs> this was the beginning of the process. <laughs> And uh, we we sent some of these devices out for testing, and we in fact found uh, that it was uh, reversing the biological age of the cells. So we went through months of this. Now I'm in my Bible study, and one of the things that comes up is looking at the um, Book of Genesis in the in the original Hebrew, and in in the Old Testament. It's in Hebrew. In the New Testament, it's in Greek. And the unique things about Hebrew and Greek is that you can distill letters into numbers. So if you take the very first sentence, we'll use this as an, well, no, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll, I'll use another example, it'll be simpler. I thought 
maybe one of the ways that God is communicating to us would be very simple and not complicated. So I thought, okay, in the Garden of Eden, there's the Tree of Life. And the Tree of Life, uh, we could read into the story that uh, Adam and Eve would eat from the fruit and not age and live perpetually. It was when uh, Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden that their lifespan was limited to about a thousand. And then after the flood, then the lifespan was limited to 120. So maybe the answer is as simple as looking at what is the number of the tree of life? So I got that number and, I, and then I thought, okay, what if this is a frequency? And then what if I, uh, what if I take that frequency and convert it into a wavelength. So there's a very well-known formula in physics for converting frequency to wavelength and then transposing it, which I did. And that frequency turned out to be 800, and, well, that wavelength rather, turned out to be 857 nanometers. That's exactly the wavelength of light that you use to turn on the mitochondria. It's exactly the wavelength of light that the ants are using so that they don't age. So, so here we come full circle. The, so it means that the Bible is in fact the inspired word of God, that there are numerical codes in the Bible. And uh, I'm certainly, I haven't even scratched the surface of the potential of this. Um, but what I found is that it validates the wavelengths of light that we've seen coming off of ants and lobsters and that if we if we look at it, you know, taking a step back, it means, okay, God really did create everything, and he signed his name. Mm -hmm. uh, and he put his name over in the light that comes off of these living organisms, and we can use that information to improve our health and probably improve the world around us. Wow. What was that number again? Uh, 857 nanometers. So in research, you'll find 850 nanometers uh -huh. uh, as a very common wavelength so uh, that's recognized as one that will upregulate mitochondrial function. It's extremely well documented. Wow. wow, that is fascinating. What was coming to mind, and I was starting to like my heart rate started racing a little bit <laughs> was that you know i've i've heard about us returning like we have the supposed junk dna and that we're returning to uh, a 12 strand blueprint um 12 strand dna rather than the two active um that's that we're kind of our body is moving into a phase shift sort of from the caterpillar to the butterfly we're kind of in the cocoon right now and moving in through this phase shift as this is happening. And what I came to understand the 144,000 was actually a frequency that had to do with this 12 strand DNA. That was like a full activation of unity consciousness and full consciousness in the body. I, maybe this is a little woo woo, I, but I I'm woo woo and I'm, we're going into it we're diving <laughs> in today, but any thoughts on that? Do you know anything about this DNA and, and getting this back together with, with what you're studying? Well, there is no junk DNA. I, That's I a fallacy. <laughs> it's a dormant, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> it's a foul. It's a fallacy because um, uh, the uh, what researchers uh, that refer to this as junk DNA, what they failed to take into account was the element of time. So in biology, when we're looking at uh, the cells and we're looking at structures, it's a snapshot. So. One of the disadvantages I'd say today of the analytics that we use uh, to look at the human body, like blood and urine testing or any bioelectrical tests, is uh, you're only getting a window into the body at that one point in time. And people often make um, you know, assumptions. Let's use blood pressure as an example. Let's say that someone is at rest and they're calm and uh, they get their blood pressure measured and um, you know it's totally normal. And then all of a sudden something happens and uh, there's some type of excitement and their blood pressure spikes. Well, you know, they're not measuring their blood pressure at, the, at that moment, 
but it's clearly not no longer in a normal range. So the same thing when we do blood and urine testing, um, we're only we're only uh, looking at a point in time. So we have to take multiple uh, pieces of data to really uh, see that that's where the trend is. Well, DNA is really the same thing. Um, we know that the telomeres will change over time. The rods on the chromosomes, we know that they will shorten. And I know you know about this because the first time we met, that's right. what we were talking about. And I couldn't tell you everything I knew about that at the time. I know, I know. Uh, uh, sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> um, but, but we know that the telomeres are structurally going to change at the time. Well, as it turns out, um, what's referred to as uh, junk DNA is not that at all. It's simply uh, genetic coding that's dormant mm -hmm. and the DNA will change its uh, structure and its shape over time. And those genes uh, that were dormant will now be, uh, start to express and other genes will turn off. So mm. it's, not, it's not junk DNA at all. It's DNA that is a dormant at the point in time that it's being observed. Beautiful. I like that as it's being observed. That's good. Well, because even that yeah. has a lot to do with things. So, all right. So now my mind's going, let's uh, well, it, it does, right? Because that, that I mean, that is uh, awareness. Uh, are you consciousness. to the uh, double slit experiment? Yep. The consciousness and your awareness and observation is what makes it collapse into reality, right? Right. Right. That's absolutely so, true. And that is really, um, you know, so much of what I studied and, and really dove into and I'm teaching these days is around these levels of consciousness because they do change what dimension we are really living in, uh, in terms of our reality because of what we're collapsing. And it's also very fascinating how what comes into our life is there for us to continue to expand, to let go of the distortion, see it in a new way and elevate, hold more of the truth within us and let go of more of the distortion. So we slowly move up that, that scale. So what I would love to do is to tie in what we know about X39 or other products from LifeWave and how that can help to facilitate or aid in this upgrading process that we're going through. It's being sort of forced with the light coming in, but how, you know, how, how are these working synergistically together? Are we getting a frequency boost? Is this affecting our consciousness? Tell me about what you know in that arena. So I'm going to start out at a place that's not so good, and then let's come back to a hopeful message, right? Because okay. we, <laughs> we should land on something positive, because there, the fact of the matter is there's always hope, uh, mm -hmm. and we can be very proactive uh, in our lives uh, so that we can protect ourselves and protect our families. Um, so um, we know that things like 5G and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are extremely damaging to the cells. Uh, some of this, even before 5G was around, when it was just 3G, um, uh, Colorado University School of Medicine was doing thermal imaging and seeing how uh, 3G was creating heating of brain tissue. So we know that our cells are, are being bombarded by microwaves, um, in our environment and it's incredibly damaging. Um, we know that there are uh, chemicals that are in our, our environment uh, that are extraordinarily damaging. Every single human being now has microplastics in their body, has foreign chemicals in their body. Um, the average number is about 97. Uh, that's been documented in clinical research. And uh, we know that there is data that is coming out um, on the VAX and uh, some of that data that's coming out of the CDC is not very good. It, it's showing all of the uh, side effects that we know that are there. So there's this onslaught in, um, in the air uh, with uh, synthetic radiation, contamination, chemical contamination in the water, in the air, in the food, uh, genetically modified food. So uh, with this onslaught, what can we do to protect ourselves? And I suppose if there's any good news about this is that ultimately these attacks are going to manifest themselves as oxidative or inflammatory stress. 
And the body already has mechanisms for dealing with this. So we have antioxidants like SOD and glutathione, which are going to be part of the body's detoxification pathways. Um, the cell membrane um, is structured so as to resist uh, electromagnetic attacks. Um, I once had the opportunity to meet Nassim Haramin. We had a wonderful uh, conversation many, many years ago in Hawaii, and he had calculated that the amount of energy that was in the cell, if you were to scale it, was equivalent to the uh, energy found in a black hole, uh, which of course is enormous. It's obviously not on the same scale, but the uh, density of the energy would be proportional. I'm not exactly sure how he calculated that, but that was uh, his opinion. And of course, he's a brilliant physicist. So this is all to say that the human body has mechanisms for dealing with this if we give it what it needs. So that means that we get a healthy diet, we supplement to support our glutathione and other antioxidant levels in the body, we hydrate, we exercise regularly, we get proper sleep, and then we use technology like the patches, which is going to uh, improve the integrity of the cell and support the um, health of the communication system in the body so it, it can do what it is uh, intended to do. And um, I think I would also say that there's other technology coming later this year uh, that will also help people take their results to the next level. So exciting. So again, then in this aiding of this upgrading process that's happening in a way right now, because of the onslaught, we really have to take matters in our own hands to even just come to like, you know, some, some zero, <laughs> some zero point to, to maintain where we are until we can get ahead. Whereas this bifurcation I'm seeing again, those who are ahead, who have been ahead, who've been taking care of their bodies and doing things like X39 and other technologies and, and uh, things to support are on their way up and the others are really starting to falter. And so yes, nutrition, I think mindset is really, really huge. And I wanna talk a little bit about that mental emotional side of things. A lot of the work that I'm doing now is to energetically in the quantum field, help remove trapped emotions that have that are in the energy body and in the body itself causing dis-ease. Um, and also certainly to the nervous system as, we're, as life is happening, we are being hit with these things to come to move through us, but they're getting stuck and trapped against these distortions and causing more disruption um, and down spiral. And this is all about an up spiral. So again, as we are playing whack-a-mole and trying to come to, you know, get ahead of things, can we talk about the mental emotional part of things, X39, the nervous system, um, and let, let's dive into what X39 specifically or other technologies that we have with LifeWave um, can do to support this getting ahead of this game or, you know, at least getting started on, on this trajectory? Well, you're bringing up a really interesting point because if we were to look at what are the most powerful ways to heal the body, it would obviously be the spiritual first because uh, spiritual healing can heal the physical body instantaneously. Um, and that's been uh, represented by uh, gifted healers over the ages. Um, with respect to emotional healing, emotional healing is way more powerful uh, than physical healing. So if you were to look at therapies like the type uh, that you're engaged with and, and talking about, um, they're going to have a very pronounced effect on the body as compared to, let's say, someone taking vitamin supplements. And this is where the patches are a very, very interesting tool because they're straddling that uh, border between the physical and the spiritual because they are stimulating the body with light. So um, the if we were to look at what is actually happening physically in the cell so that we can understand why emotional healing is so powerful, uh, it's because exactly what you said, the effects on the nervous system. So when people live in a state of anger, and uh, that's what I think the news is kind of meant to do is provoke You're states an anger. of anger and frustration, right? So uh, it can be very dangerous to watch it. You have to get enough in to know what's going on in the world, but not too much that it, it makes you angry. 
Um, we, we know from clinical studies that that state of anger causes tremendous stress on the autonomic nervous system, leads to increases in cortisol, uh, problems with the endocrine system, problems with the adrenals, and um, ultimately increases in oxidative and inflammatory stress, which age the body quickly. So, so the formula is if you live in a state of anger, your body is going to age more quickly and you're never going to attain any type of spiritual awareness. On the other hand, uh, you know, sometime I, I like to say that I think Jesus was the first uh, anti-aging scientist or age reversal scientist uh, by telling people to love one another. Um, but in, you know, Judeo-Christian beliefs in Buddhism, I won't speak to other, you know, religions because I don't know enough about them. I don't study them. Uh, but the the idea that we should love one another is not only great for society, um, but when we live in a state of love, it actually reverses the age of the body. Um, this is proven now. Uh, there have been studies which look at muscle fiber. And uh, if a person has elevated levels of oxytocin, the hormone that is, is associated with love, it will actually reverse the age of muscle tissue. Uh, it doesn't matter if people are 70 or 80 years old, that muscle tissue will begin to look more like someone in their 20s. So the good news is uh, anyone listening that's in their 60s, 70s, 80s, it's not too late if you start to live in a state of love, your body will change and remarkably fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fascinating. I love that. And I, I also understand, you know, anger, of course, being on that lower spectrum, just we're either in love or we're in some state of fear. And it's really a spectrum. It's, it's, uh, you know, how many, how much distortion and clouds are in between you and that, that source connection of love, which is purely what we are. Our soul is love. And, and I, and also this Christ consciousness and unity consciousness, this is really this part of this ascension. Um, and, and that is the direction to move. And we can't heal when we are in, in the lower, the lower levels. If we're in fear, we're in fight or flight, the body can't heal. <laughs> we have to be in that love. And when you think about how incredible people feel when they fall in love and they're in that period where there is no past or future. They're focused totally in the present. There's no, there's no distortion. They have energy for days and, and they're healing and they look younger and everything. It's like instant, right? If we can cultivate that within, remove the things that are not real, that are not true. Um, that's, you know, such a part of healing as well. So in terms of X39 and what it can do for the nervous system and in this elevation um, can we talk about that in terms of the frequency, yep. what it does for the nervous system? Yeah. So actually I would talk about both X39 and Eon yeah. because they're such a great pair for one another. So Eon, uh, of course we released that. Um, I started work on that back in 2010 and um, it is designed to elevate a peptide that's produced in the liver and um, it will trigger a response in what's known as the primitive immune system. So we get increases in glutathione, increases in SOD, and a basic relaxation response in the autonomic nervous system. Um, although if someone is in a state of relaxation, it'll move us more to a state of balance. Most people though are in a sympathetic drive and they can't uh, calm down so Eon is going to help them get more into a state of balance. Um, and it, it's in that state of balance, uh, really, where we find the best immune function. Uh, if, if, ironically, if our bodies are too relaxed, our immune system can uh, struggle. So the advantage to this is that getting our nervous system into a state of balance reduces inflammatory stress and uh, it will ultimately end up producing pain and improving quality of life. Where X39 comes in is that it stimulates the skin with light, increases copper peptide levels, and in so doing, uh, GHKCU, copper peptide, will reset thousands of genes to a more youthful state. So it is one of the best uh, natural weapons that we have 
to combat what's going on in the world today is if we keep our genes in a youthful state, then our immune system is working, our mitochondria is working, our protein synthesis is working, and uh, we can handle the stressors around us. Fantastic. Do you think that that would aid in this, this elevation of consciousness in general, in terms of its effect on our awareness perspective, perspective, because what I've really noticed and what I tend to teach in this shift with the autonomic nervous system coming into more balance, the coherence in the brain, I would love for you to talk about that, uh, heart rate variability, maybe even that brain heart coherence, all of these to me seem to feed into um, into a new perspective, almost like a, like a consciousness shift, an awareness shift that can help us along this journey and seeing the world with kinder eyes, with more love and moving into that direction. Can you speak to that? I think, I think there is a number of very interesting connections there. First, I think the fact that the patches do what they do uh, when they're introduced to people, um, they have to stop and think for a minute and say, well, if this relieved my pain, how did that actually do that? And really light is doing this. So it gives them an opportunity to awaken to this idea that the body is much more than just a chemical factory. There's, there's a lot more going on. So that I think would be one important thing. Another thing is that we know from thousands of years of Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine that the emotions are strongly correlated and associated with organs in the body. So for example, we know when you know we're talking about anger, we know that that's strongly correlated to the liver. When people live in fear, that's strongly correlated with the lungs. So if we can improve the health of those organs, now we can live a more peaceful life and uh, we don't have to live in fear. Um, but the other thing, when we talk about spiritual ascension, that's a really interesting thing. Because if our, when we think about how do people achieve a more balanced spiritual life? Well, you go into prayer, you go into meditation, and you're doing that in a state of relaxation. So having a tool like the patches that can help facilitate uh, relaxation of the nervous system is going to aid in those practices. Um, you still have to do the work. Yes. And you still have to set aside time uh, for that. Uh, but the patches are a great tool to assist people on that journey. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I, and I'm also curious about, so I understand that the, the patches, the energy patches, of course, but certainly X39 as well, deliver this light and this energy to the mitochondria as well. Um, I personally feel, and, and many people, especially spiritual people, when I patch them, um, they they seem to they feel it and they feel a boost it's almost like an upgrade um and to me that that signifies it, it's like you're, free, you're I, when i patch somebody i say within 24 to 48 hours you're you're jumping a level <laughs> would you <laughs> and i know you don't have probably science to that is that something measurable is that something that you witnessed or that you would uh you know concur with <laughs> yeah i think i would say with all of our products what we certainly see improvements in the way the body generates energy, the flow of energy through the body. And that's going to mani manifest itself in many, many different ways. Uh, many years ago, uh, there was a fellow that I was working with and he had been in a, a terrible accident and he had a cast around his leg. So we began to work uh, with uh, the patches and also with a pulsed electromagnetic field therapy device that I had invented. And as the pain, he was at, he described it as being, you know, at a, as a 15 out of 10 on the pain scale. So uh, as he got the treatment and the pain started to come down, he experienced a type of euphoria. Uh, that's the only way I could describe it, that he was finally getting relief. And then uh, at one point, the cast fell off of his leg and uh, because the swelling had come down so much and he was able to walk without any kind of pain. So sometimes every once in a while, uh, this has happened quite a few times over the years where you have these, it's, it's like, you know, spirit will intervene and you witness a miracle and uh, you see this uh, divine healing 
and it manifests itself in in people going into i think yeah i'd say maybe like a state of euphoria mm -hmm. um it can start with the physical but then it, it transitions into the spiritual mm -hmm. yeah i i'm curious too when it when it comes to some people and it seems like again a lot of my kind of my peeps are are in this realm more and more and and so i'm attracting more people that are in the healing arts and that are like on this path to incorporate x39 and and certainly the other patches afterwards and the new things that are coming so excited um and so what we're finding is we're patching some people and they're finding it's almost too much energy their body just it just takes it in and it's like they they get this feeling like whoa it's it's like a lot and so we're having them titrate their way you know where it'll just a little slower to, to get to um is that is that because they they don't have like they don't need to come into balance they're actually moving straight past the balance and into that that next level what do you think yeah so sometimes this is where the patches are applied and interestingly what we found is that um when people have that effect uh, it's almost always they have the patches uh, somewhere on the upper torso. And if they move the patches to the lower torso, uh, that it's not quite as stimulating. So, for example, they could put the energy or the ice wave patches on the bottom of the feet mm -hmm. that would correlate to the kidneys. And that has a relatively calming effect on the body. Uh, placing patches on the upper torso can stimulate flow in the energy uh, through uh, what we call the pericardium channel or the triple burner channel. And this is like activating the internal fire. And then, yeah, you start to get all this energy that flows. Got it. Got it. And X39 can do that as well on the body. X39 does it a little bit differently, but it is certainly very, very powerful when it comes to stimulating the body and the reactions that we see. So certainly when we've done our studies, one of the common feedbacks is, yeah, I noticed the first day that I had more energy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, great. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about genes, uh, genetics, DNA repair. I'll keep you uh, not too, too much longer, but <laughs> this is juicy. <laughs> so explaining how X39 facilitates this re-regulating, right? This up, this, this, you know, our, our genetics are getting all wonky and dysregulated, right? From our food, our air, our water, toxic, toxic thinking, all of the things. So we have st some that are downregulating, some that are upregulating, and they're expressing and dis-ease in many areas. And so with that preface, we have this rewrite that's happening when we apply this patch very quickly um, that's re-regulating, correct? Can you speak to that a little bit and how that works with our DNA? Yeah. So there's probably uh, two mechanisms here that are worth discussing. Uh, the first one, before we get to X39, let's talk about glutathione. Um, because when you use X39, it will elevate glutathione levels in the body. That's part of the beauty of it. Um, so let's take, uh, for example, studies that have been done with UV light. And so we know UV light can cause breaks in the DNA and this can lead to mutations and it can lead to cancer, right? So how do we protect ourselves from that? Well, what's been found, uh, not surprisingly, is that when the glutathione levels in the body, the body's master antioxidant, when they go low, it gives uh, things like UV light an opportunity to damage the DNA. But if we keep our glutathione levels elevated, Let's say someone goes out in the sun, they get too much UV light, but they have elevated levels of glutathione. Um, the glutathione will repair the DNA before the cell divides, and that prevents a mutation from occurring. So our bodies, again, very uh, in a very elegant fashion, already have uh, some simple and sophisticated measures for protecting ourselves from mutations or damage to the DNA. And glutathione is one way to do it. So that means people should eat their broccoli. Uh, they should have sulfur containing foods, uh, take an NAC supplement. Um, they, and of course they can use things like the glutathione patch or X39. Now where X39 comes in, that's different than glutathione is the power of uh, copper and copper peptide. So um, back maybe um, starting around the 1950s, 
Um, the FDA was recommending people take three milligrams of copper daily. And progressively over the time, that's been reduced to 900 micrograms, so less than one milligram. And um, people can get 30 milligrams of copper uh, just by having a serving of liver. And uh, most people aren't going to have that every day. Uh, but if they have things like chocolate and wheatgrass, they could get a few milligrams of copper. So uh, the, the reason to bring this up is that we need copper to make the mitochondria produce energy, and we need copper to help regulate the genes in the body. So you get this very simple peptide uh, called GHKCU. It's made of the amino acids glycine, histidine, and lysine. And we have plenty of it when we're in our 20s. And then by the age of 60, our levels of copper peptide have come down 60 to 80%. And uh, copper peptide is going to be responsible for keeping about one third of the human genome in a youthful state. And part of that is going to regulate stem cell activity, amongst other things, wound healing, uh, the function of the immune system, uh, inflammation, quality of our skin. It, it covers a very broad spectrum of, of health benefits. As well, right? That's where the nervous system also comes in. Yeah. Exactly. So, so if we could think for a moment, if we had a product that could keep 100% of our genes at age 25, we'd all be pretty happy. Uh, for right now, it's a third of the genome. And mm -hmm. our work is to get that other two thirds. That's what we look for. Um, but the, the important thing about this is by doing very simple things, uh, and they're both uh, uh, simple tripeptides, by keeping our glutathione levels elevated, by keeping our copper peptide levels elevated, we can help to protect our DNA from um, chemical attacks, from energetic attacks, uh, things like 5G and Bluetooth, and we can help to uh, maintain the integrity of the cell, help our immune function, and keep our body healthy and strong. And, and that's really important message. That's amazing. So it does help in in those assaults, those energetic assaults from our environment, the X39? Um, I would say because the mechanism, well, there's two interesting mechanisms. One itself is copper. Mm -hmm. uh, we right. didn't get to finish this work because of the pandemic, but when people take um, copper supplements or they get an increase in copper in the skin, it acts as a shield or a barrier to electromagnetic energy. So people with elevated levels of copper won't be as subject to some of the damaging effects of the sun, to 5G, uh, Bluetooth, and so forth. That's amazing. It's like our own Faraday cage, <laughs> our skin, right? <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, I actually uh, had spoke with a scientist years ago in Sweden who is an expert in this. And I had said, I have this hypothesis about how to form a biological Faraday cage. Yeah. And he said, oh, I've never heard of anything like this before, but, it, but that's exactly what it is. That's so cool. I love that. I wear certain little things that have like tourmaline and, uh, you know, different things. Mm -hmm charge them in the sun and put them on just to give my, you know, and I've muscle tested to see if I'm, my biofield is stronger, you know, or if I'm stronger. And it's really they're fascinating technologies out there these days, but I'm not as, I'm not as uh, crazy about some of the actual electrical technologies. Um, and there's something different about the frequencies that are coming off the patches that seem to hit differently than those electronic devices. Um, I don't know what this is. I, I think we talked about this in the last episode, so I, I won't go into it right now, but that's also really interesting how gentle that these are and that they really are, um, they're just so unique and, and thankfully heavily patented as well. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, all right. So let me just check my last couple of questions here. I know that these denser energies, I had spoken a little bit before about distortions, the torsion fields of, of negative thinking and, and different assaults that we have create distortions in the body that then eventually burrow their ways. The way I say, turn into matter, create this ease. Um, as working with these to, to, to clear these, do you feel that the energy of the patches and the, and the, the change in the frequency at the mitochondria and, and the cascade of that can help to loosen or lessen some of these denser energies in the body to help us on this process of 
holding more light in and getting rid of the distortion from the body? Um, you know, I would say if we looked at it from the perspective that the body's always going to function better in a state of homeostasis, in a state of balance, and anything that we can do to keep our bodies in a state of balance is going to facilitate uh, the proper flow of energy through the body. So I'd probably look at it that way. And um, then, of course, um, what we're looking at is how can we best maintain the health of the metabolism of the cell? And again, that comes right back to the mitochondria, so which is so all of that is measurable. So, yeah, I would agree with it from from that perspective. From that perspective. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so the mitochondria, and, and this is, is this affecting all the cells in the body or just the stem cells? I mean, which is really, you know, the, the vast majority of things are, but what about those specialized cells in the body? Are they also getting that boost of mitochondria at the mitochondria? Well, I would say there are energy carriers in the body. Uh, so uh, there are cells that don't make uh, energy and that has to be supplied from an external source. Uh, and that's where uh, ATP comes in handy uh, because it's going to act like that, you know, gasoline or fuel for the cell. Got it. Got it. Okay. Last couple of things here. I want to talk about heart brain coherence, uh, HR, the um, heart rate variability. Is there, is there a connection with the brain and the heart that you feel is part of what this conversation in terms of, you know, what we're, what we're doing with LifeWave um, and certainly, um, Again, in terms of the, the also the, the coherence, we, we did already speak a bit about the nervous system, but the heart, I want to I want to really bring it into that conversation. Yeah. Um, well, we have on one level, uh, many of the early studies uh, that we did with LifeWave were on heart rate variability. And those studies were done at the University of Texas in El Paso with Dr. Homer Nazaran. And uh, so heart rate variability, of course, is looking at the ratio, uh, high frequency, low frequency muscle contractions in the four chambers of the heart. And obviously, we would like to see everything be in balance. And HRV can uh, tell us a lot more about what's going on in the body than just simply with uh, the heart. It can be a predictor of many things. So... It was found uh, that when tools like the energy patches were placed on the wrist at the pericardium points, that it could improve the heart rate variability and cause a relaxation response in the nervous system. Um, later, the type of things that we started to look at was having Eon improve heart rate variability, and then even uh, having patch applications around the head. We used to have this thing that we taught called a pyramid protocol, whereas if you uh, looked at the head as being the great pyramid, uh, you could apply patches at the base and then right at the crown, uh, that would be the tip. And uh, we did a uh, study, uh, it was at University of Tennessee, and uh, we found that people could get into a meditative state much more easily. Uh, by applying the Eon patch and the energy patches around the head in, in this protocol. Um, so there was something to that. So yeah, um, I would say we've definitely found ways over the years to use the, the patches to improve uh, both the heart and uh, the health of the brain and the way people meditate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that connection, I think that's so important. Okay. And I think uh, what I'd like to maybe wrap with, although I could keep you forever, I don't, I don't want to do that. So <laughs> um, this last question, speaking about our life force energy, our Kundalini and, you know, again, and the spiritual conversation, there's a lot of talk around the rising of the Kundalini. People are having different um, traumas that happen in their life that are sparking, you know, Kundalini awakening, if you will, or like almost like a, a forcing of this energy through the chakra system. And it's hitting the distortions and the different things in the body that are creating a lot of havoc. Um, <laughs> for some people and others are having just this like, you know, electrical current they're feeling going up and down the spine and through, you know, the chakras. So um, my question with this going through the nervous system and out through the whole nervous system, this is, this is an upgrade. This is, you know, um, it, it's part of awakening. And so 
looking again at LifeWave and at the patches and X39 in terms of this process, do you see a correlation in the improvement of the ability to move this energy since we, you've been working in the meridian systems and, and all this movement of energy through the body? Is there a correlation there um, or something that we can just grab hold of to help us through that process when people are challenged with that? That's an interesting question. You know, uh, years ago, uh, I met a medical doctor in Taiwan, Dr. Anna Tao, and what she was regularly doing was applying patches along the spine, uh, and she would put a white energy patch at the back of the neck and then a tan patch at the base of the spine, and she was principally doing this to uh, help her patients get pain relief, and she would see that this would cause a relaxation in the spine, the spine would, would release and people would get pain relief from it. Um, but of course, in a number of different practices, that would be the first step mm -hmm. to having an experience like a Kundalini rising. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've had that happen to me uh, when I've gone into meditation. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and as you know, it does require some work because everything kind of has to be just right. And it is really an extraordinary experience. So whether or not, uh, we certainly haven't done any clinical studies to see how we might use the patches this way, but I suppose I would say that there's some evidence there that we could use it that way. It'd be something very interesting to explore. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't think it's good to, to awaken Kundalini forcefully. Uh, I, I'm definitely not a proponent. Right. Of that, uh, but certainly to relieve when it has kind of let loose. Um, I, I have likewise, especially more recently, you know, I wake up in the middle of the night and I just feel electric currents going all over the place, but they're not painful for me. Thankfully, they're they're actually quite nice, but it's it's very interesting. And I, I'm always just like, you know, a little wink up and going, thank you. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> We're on yeah, the right path. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Fascinating. It's so cool. So I guess in wrapping, what I'd love to just say is um, indeed on this journey, as, as our bodies are in this phase shift, in this awakening process, this ascension process, the frequencies rising, we are finding that distortions are coming up that we need to clear and work with. Sometimes they're painful. Sometimes they're more euphoric. Um, and that these patches really can help to facilitate in this process, whether it's to bring relief, to bring more balance, or even to help to facilitate and jumpstart, um, you know, or keep us moving on that path. Um, and, and that's what I just love about it. And I love to bring this conversation to this community. And of course, if you're watching this, um, you know, I, Sweet Spot Power, that's what, again, what I'm all about. So I'm always looking for hacks and different ways to help to support these processes. And also, um, you know, and of course, if you found this from somebody else and they sent you this, please get back with them and make sure you speak with them and learn more about this incredible, these technologies and, and also take a look into how this might be able to support any practices you're doing if you are in the healing arts or really in any in any of these um, modalities or just an everyday person, quite frankly, we're, we're all part of this together. So we have a conversation about that as well because we do this from home and, and we just love that the happy customers are, are the ones who, who put this out there to everyone else. And so I really love this conversation, David. Do you have any last thoughts about this in this realm? Again, we've got a whole other um, you know conversation that we did that I'm gonna link in the description below all about the science and it's a whole different it's a left brain conversation. Um, this right brain conversation, again, being more on the metaphysical side. Any last thoughts with that uh, sort of wrap up or anything that's come to you? Oh, I, I think what I would say is, uh, you know, people uh, today um, were faced with an enormous number of challenges in the world around us, but there's always hope. And if we turn our attention to God, if we live a life of prayer, if we live a life of love, uh, we can find ways to protect ourselves and protect our, our families, our loved ones uh, against some of the things that are going on in the world. And it, it, is, um, it is a responsibility we have today to, to speak up against some of the darkness in the world and uh, foster the light within us and in the world around us so we can live on a planet uh, and be at peace uh, the way that God intended. Absolutely. I, yeah. Amen. <laughs> and given that we're headed towards this unity consciousness, this Christ consciousness, this true um, state of, of being of love and really seeing that we all are interconnected. If we can see this from a higher 
perspective and recognize that everything that's coming up right now in the world and within us as well is really just distortion coming up to be cleared. We're moving into higher and higher frequencies all around. This is a beautiful thing, but we have to move through this phase shift collectively as well. And so to have grace with yourself, grace with what's happening and understand we're in God's hands and it's all somehow in the end for the greater good of all, but to really be a part of you, your part of anchoring yourself into the highest frequencies yourself, the highest ways of caring for yourself and loving people around you and loving yourself as well. And then collectively we'll make it through this together. So thank you so much for being Absolutely. here today. Yeah. Thank you, and Alex. Appreciate it. So great. So great. Thank you again. And uh, let me go ahead and turn off the recording.